Good morning and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry to get started a little late. Our uh, traffic downtown was more than expected. Um, but it's our pleasure, a real pleasure, to welcome you to the 16th annual meeting of the Indiana Clinical and Translational Science Institute. The theme of our meeting is precision to population. It's a broad term um, for the efforts to improve the ability to treat or prevent disease and promote health-based on individual lifestyles, environment, and genetic factors. So I'm Dr. Sharon Mo, co-director of the Indiana CTI, along with my co-director, Sarah Weehy. I'm also the assistant dean, or associate dean, for clinical and translational research in Indiana University School of Medicine and the division director of nephrology. Hi, a warm welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Sarah Weehy. I'm a professor of pediatrics and associate dean for community and translational research and co-director of the Indiana CTSI with Sharon. So we're pleased to be joined here in Hine Hall. Um, there's actually over 300 people who have registered for the event. Um, and you are in the room, uh, the lucky ones. We would encourage you actually to come down uh, closer to the mic here and engage in uh, questions throughout the meeting. Um, and if you're online and you're within quick driving distance, I would encourage you to come and join us here in person <laughs> um, because this is going to be a spectacular um, event today. Very excited. We do offer CME. Um, if you are interested in that, um, you can sign up and we'll be sent an email follow up to complete um, the needed information for your credit. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to us or the IU School of Medicine CME office. Um, it was, oh, thank you. There is a slide. Okay, there you go. <laughs> this is the CME information. Take out your cameras and scan if you want to get the CME credit. We'll have it throughout the day. Yeah. All right. Think, and this is the agenda um, for the meeting, as you all should have also in your packets. So with that, so as co-directors of the Indiana CTSI, we would be remiss not to do just a quick and brief overview of the Indiana Clinical and Translational Sciences Institute. Um, as you all know, we are a part of a larger network of over 60 CTSA, CTSA hubs across the country. Uh, we are the only hub here in Indiana and are a partnership among Indiana University, Purdue University, the University of Notre Dame, and the Regan Shreve Institute. Um, the national goals of the CTSAs nationally um, are, are listed here along um, on the slide. Um, but we are essentially intended to provide the infrastructure for translational research and national connectivity to promote program impact. So what do we do? We convene, and we convene through our extensive partnerships uh, across the state. This is with our partner institutions as well as um, all academic institutions across the state, healthcare institutions, community organizations, um, as well as the public in every single county of our 92 counties, um, as well as corporations and industry. We collaborate. Most notably, we have great connectors at every campus hub um, that is our navigators. If you're a navigator in the room, please raise your hand. Woo, navigators! <laughs> um, there is no wrong door with the CTSI, so any of us you can approach. If you have a question, if you want to get connected, if you're looking for a resource, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. And finally, we catalyze. Um, our experts offer curated services and resources to enhance training, to optimize the success of competitive grant submissions, and effectively translate your research into impact. So it would, it would actually take about you know, an hour to go through everything that we offer, but you can kind of think of us as in operated or operationally in pillars. So we are here with research support and services. So you can ask your navigator or you can go to one of our project development teams, statistics, bioethics. Uh, we have many programs that are here to and designed for you to get feedback on your research proposals and your research implementation. Uh, we have workforce development, including K awardees, T awardees, grant writing help. We have lots of summer immersion programs for high school and others. 
Community engagement is excellent. We have Research Jam, which is a patient engagement course. So if you need help in trying to figure out how to better reach your population, how to advertise your study, how to do anything, they're here to help. As Sarah mentioned, we have individuals in every county. We have a large community advisory board. So you can get the feedback from those outside these walls of science um, and, and have better luck in uh, fulfilling your your pro projects. We also have informatics, so we will do feasibility assessments and we cover those costs at the INPC through the Reagan Street Data Services. We will help with REDCap and we're excited we're implementing new programs that will allow a direct download of Cerner and EPIC into REDCap. So those are coming in the next year. We have lots of large database access, expert knowledge, and then, of course, we operate clinical research centers, not just at University Hospital, but at Riley, the Neuroscience Center, Bloomington, and Purdue. So if you need a place to do your research study, we have those. We also have worked really hard with single IRB. If you're putting in grants that need a single IRB across multiple institutions, we have expertise that will help you do that. We also have coordinators that can help you with many of your activities and at least helping you train and get uh, education for your coordinators. So today we have uh, multiple speakers um, and we wanted to just highlight briefly what activities they're very involved in. So Kosali Simon is um, very engaged in all of us, a national database, INPC, a data person. She, she will be your go-to today. Uh, Jason Rohr has done uh, received pilot funding from the CTSI Translational Population Health PDT. Uh, Rebecca and Brandon Keene are, have uh, gone with the pediatric PDT to get help with their research, and uh, Rebecca is a K-12 scholar. Laura Nephew used the Research Jam Human Centered Design to help implement her study in the community. Melissa Pagalinen is our all new All In for Health Community Engagement uh, Director, and Peter Schwartz defines our bioethics and biobank communication um, services. So we want to hear how the CTSI has helped you. Um, around this whole facility today, you're going to see these cards. These cards basically are our goal to get your impact of what we've done for you. This is something that we are uh, we want to report to our funders um, and we want to hear how we helped your science. So please take a moment to fill those out and uh, let us know what this CTSI has meant for you. So our favorite submission, Sarah and I will figure out a really great, great prize. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> we, we will tailor it to the person. Maybe yeah, there you pizza go. party, maybe beer. Uh, or wine or a, a Starbucks card. One of those, whatever your choice will be. We'll get there, but we're going to pick those out. All right, so uh, it is now my pleasure to transition to the Watanabe Award. Um, I don't think I remember this. Thank you. <laughs> so um, it's... Thank you. Okay, so my introduction is to, well, actually, before he joins us, this is the Watanabe um, symbol, and it's a crest based on the ancient Japanese Watarabi clan from which the name Watanabe is derived. It symbolizes a ferry or a canoe as the Watarabi clan ran ferry services throughout Japan. The symbol was also chosen by Dr. Watanabe uh, as Dr. Watanabe helped ferry discoveries through the translational research pipeline. All right, so as Dean Hess joins, um, it's my pleasure to introduce him. Uh, he will begin our morning session for us. For those of you who are new to us and by chance have not heard of his many accomplishments, Dean Hess is the 10th Dean of the US, uh, the IU School of Medicine, the largest medical school in the US with nine campuses and 11,000 staff, faculty and students. Uh, he joined us in 2013 as the uh, Dean, but also Executive Vice President for University Clinical Fel uh, Affairs and the Walter J. Daly Professor and Director of the Indiana Statewide Medical Education System. So during his tenure um, thus far, uh, he's already overseen a doubling in research funding from the NIH. He's led the school through a comprehensive curriculum reform and strengthened the relationship with IU Health, uh, the school's primary clinical partner. He is also a physician scientist himself, focused on translational research, who has authored more than 100 scientific papers and book chapters, making a truly significant impact on patient care. So it was a pleasure to have him here to welcome another great translational scientist who has significantly impacted patient care. So look and enjoy this wonderful symbol and mm -hmm. Dean Hess.
Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Sharon and Sarah. It's a real pleasure to be here again this year. Uh, so we have a number of additional introductions to make. So at this time, I'd like to invite Drs. Tatiana Farood, Kelvin Lee, and Craig Thompson to the stage. So um, first, I'd like to welcome and acknowledge uh, Dr. Farood, who, who will be the moderator for the, the questions at the end of this session. So Dr. Farood has been with IU School of Medicine for over 27 years and is our Executive Associate Dean for Research Affairs. She's a distinguished professor, a chancellor's professor, and the August M. Watanabe Professor of Medical Research. As a researcher, she's a statistical geneticist and a leader in dementia research, including running the NIH-designated repository for over 2 million blood DNA tissue and other samples that are collected uh, for the NIH um, in supporting research in Alzheimer's disease. In addition, I'd also like to um, welcome and introduce our co-nominator -nom for the prize this year with me, Dr. Kelvin Lee, who's director of the IU Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center, our associate dean for cancer research, and a newly elected member of the Board of Directors for the Association of American Cancer Institutes. Now about the award. The August M. Watanabe Prize in Translational Research was named in honor of the late August, or Gus Watanabe, who was a giant in the field of translational research in both academia and industry, who impacted the health of people around the world as a leader at the IU School of Medicine and Eli Lilly and Company, but also as part of the Central Indiana Life Sciences Initiative, which ultimately led to the formation of BioCrossroads. In recognition of Gus's unparalleled dedication to scientific inquiry and his tireless advocacy of translational research, Eli Lilly and Company and the IU School of Medicine partnered to create this prize, which remains one of the nation's largest and most prestigious in the field of translational research. The Watanabe Prize recognizes senior investigators who have made sustained significant contributions in translational science and who have shepherded scientific discoveries into new and better therapies. Unfortunately, Dr. Peg Watanabe, Gus's wife, was not able to join us today, but she is certainly here in spirit as we present this award. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Craig Thompson, who is the Ben O. C. Schmidt Chair of Cancer Research at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Dr. Thompson served as President and CEO of Memorial Sloan Kettering from 2010 to 2022, and he continues to oversee his lab at Memorial Sloan Kettering where his research focuses on cellular metabolism and its role in disease and cancer. Dr. Thompson's eminently qualified to serve as the Watanabe, to, to receive the Watanabe Prize, as he's made many important discoveries, delineating fundamental mechanisms of biology and then translating these insights into therapies. Just a brief list of these accomplishments includes being one of the first to characterize the first immune checkpoint protein, CTLA-4, which led to revolutionary therapies for many cancers. Defining how cells regulate program cell death. Together with Stanley Korsmeyer, Thompson's work was seminal in delineating the molecular mechanisms regulating program cell death which is critical for growth and development and is commonly deranged in a variety of cancers and other diseases. Thompson played a seminal role in translating these discoveries into cancer therapeutics. Another area was establishing reprogramming of glucose and glutamine uptake and metabolism as a fundamental mechanism in oncogenesis, which has led to new clinical approaches in both the treatment and diagnosis of cancer. And there are many other seminal discoveries. Uh, so in, in addition to receiving the Watanabe Prize this year, Dr. Thompson has also received many national and international honors, including 
several years ago, our own Stephen C. Beering Award for Medical Research and uh, the American College of Physicians Award for Medical Science. He's a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine. And he serves on many scientific advisory boards, including the Board of Scientific Counselors of the National Cancer Institute, the Board of Directors of the American Association for Cancer Research, and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Medical Advisory Board. So, Dr. Thompson, in recognition of your transformative research that has led to improved therapies and better lives for patients, we present you with the 2024 August M. Watanabe Prize. It's a big check. <laughs> and, uh, and this plaque, and congratulations. Oh, thank you very much, Joe. We'll come over here and get the photo op.